everybody and welcome to the first episode in my Getting Into Medical School series. Today we're going to be kicking it off by looking at the route into medicine. Now before we dive in, for those of you that don't know, my name is Jordan and I'm a first year medical student at the University of Lincoln. So, the route's into medicine. There are so many routes into medicine that cater to everyone from those people that have just finished their A-levels and are going straight to university, the standard entry applicant, and also ones that apply to those people with lower grades. So I'm hoping that a large number of people and variety of people will find this video informative, useful, and quite enjoyable. So where do we begin? Before I start talking about all the routes, I think it's important to clarify that I'm gonna be talking about two courses. I'm gonna be talking about undergraduate courses and postgraduate courses. The main focus will be on the undergraduate courses, which is the one we generally think of. The degree is five or six years long. From there, what are the routes into medical school? So, as we already know, you have your standard entry applicant. These are the people that usually obtain three A's at A-level. They apply to university during year 13. They've sat the UK cat or the BMAT, they've gone through their interviews, been given an offer, achieved the grade and gone to university in the September, October and to year one. Now, on top of that, there are people that will go through the same process, but they will end up on the foundation year. These are normally called year zero of the medicine course. They are there to widen participation and widen access to medicine. These usually have a lower grade requirement. For example, here at Lincoln and also at Nottingham, the foundation year requires BBC. These do still require biology and chemistry, just like the standard entry courses, but their aim is to make sure you're up to the same level of knowledge as a standard entry applicant. However, from my experience of being a foundation year student, you actually get more information than the standard entry applicants. So we're able to go into first year with slightly heightened knowledge, which really helps with that transition to starting medical school, because there is a lot of information you get given in first year. An important thing to note with the foundation year is that it is one extra year on top of your degree, but you are guaranteed a place at medical school upon successful completion of that year. So what is the next route into medicine that I'm gonna talk about? It's actually access to medicine diplomas. These aren't something that you hear about very often, and I think that's because they're aimed at adult learners. So those people that are age 19 or over and have decided that they want to go into higher education, go to university. So these are, tend to be aimed at people who haven't got a level three equivalent qualification. So for me, that would be an A-level, could be a Scottish higher. And essentially you just need GCSEs to be able to apply. They are an extra year, but you do then afterwards have to apply to the universities whilst doing your diploma. So it's not guaranteed, whereas the foundation year, once you're on the foundation year, as long as you pass, you're straight into medical school, you haven't quite got that option with the access to higher education diplomas. But it can be a really great option for those people that don't know they want to do medicine early on in life, because not everyone does. The access to higher education diplomas could also be an option if you took A-levels that don't relate to medicine because at the time of picking your A-levels you didn't think you wanted to do medicine and that's obviously absolutely fine and it is just another option for you to get into medicine. I know that another option that I explored when I was applying to medicine was degree transfers. These are exactly what they sound like. At some universities, if you're on a certain course that's related to medicine, you may be offered to transfer from the degree you are on into the first year of the medical course. You still have to undertake an interview and it's incredibly competitive. Very few people actually get offered the chance to transfer. So it's a great option as a fifth UCAS choice. If you know that you really want to do medicine, you could pick your fifth option at a university that offers degree transfer in the hope that you might be one of those lucky few. It's also really crucial to mention though that don't just pick a university for that one reason, make sure it's a course you like as well because you don't want to be stuck on a course that you don't enjoy because you might not get that transfer that you want and equally if you don't get the transfer being on a degree you enjoy means you're more likely to do better and therefore if you choose to apply to the postgraduate course later on, you're in a much better position because you're likely to have got a better grade. That brings us very nicely onto talking about the postgraduate course. I'll be honest, this isn't something I'm an expert on. I'm here doing an undergraduate degree. But the basics of them are, they're frequently referred to as GEM, which is graduate entry medicine. 
they are a four year course and you have to take a different exam before going into the postgraduate course. You have to take the GAMSAT, whereas for undergraduate you have to take the BMAT or the UK CAT. They essentially, I'd say, are they only open to people that have already taken university degree, but they're a great option for those people that really want to do medicine, maybe missed out on the undergraduate course and therefore maybe went and did biomedical sciences or just medical sciences and really want to go into medicine and do it afterwards. But equally, it could be really great for someone that was on a course like that, didn't want to do medicine at the time, but now does. So it has a great, it's really great for those people that decide a little bit later on. And equally, it's just another option. It is incredibly competitive though. There are frequently less spaces on those courses than the undergraduate and not as many universities do run the postgraduate course. I think a lot of postgraduate students will actually apply to both undergrad and postgrad medicine courses. This might be simply because some of the universities they really like don't offer the postgraduate course. But equally, if you get offered the undergrad as a postgrad, you have a lot of funding issues potentially because you can't get the same government funding. It's not something I'm that familiar with. And if you do find yourself in that situation, I recommend having a research, or if you really want me to talk about it, drop a comment, I'll do some research and we'll see where we go with it. But that is your postgraduate course and they are your route into undergraduate medicine. So what comes next? There are frequently a lot of questions regarding resit and going through clearing. So resit are a tricky one. Every university is different. Certain universities say no, no resits at all. Some of them say yes, and of those that do accept resit, many of them have a minimum grade requirement from your first attempt. So some universities may say you want, they need you to have at least AAB in your first cycle, and then to achieve the AAA in your resits. Whereas some universities, I think Chelmsford, so Anglia Ruskin, say as long as you hit three A's within two years of your first attempt, we'll take you. So it's definitely one to research if you do find yourself in that position. And on that topic, if you didn't do as well in your first cycle for certain extenuating circumstances, contact the universities because many of them that say they don't accept resits, if you actually explain the situation, they will accept you. I personally did have that situation and I had to do like a pre-application to Imperial and they went, yeah, we'll look at you on equal terms with everyone else. And I was able to apply through the normal cycle and I was looked at equally and was fortunate enough to get an offer. So definitely have a look around and ask these questions to people. It might not be publicised on their website, but they still may accept recent applicants depending on the circumstances. The next thing to talk about is definitely to talk about clearing. As many of you will know from watching my clearing video, link will be in the description if you haven't seen it, but clearing is 100% a viable way to get into medicine. It's not one I would recommend. It was incredibly stressful and it is incredibly competitive. And ultimately at that point, you just have to go with what's left. I was really fortunate in that through my experience, I was not only offered, but offered someone that I actually do like. It had been so easy for me to have just gone, I have one offer for medicine, I'm just gonna take it and absolutely despise the location. So it should never be your goal to go through clearing, but if you do get stuck there, it is a viable option. And I think really you just have to make sure you remain calm. I didn't do that, but it's a viable option and that applies to both the undergraduate course and the postgraduate course. But it's important to remember that not every university goes into clearing and it's also not the same universities every year so definitely don't rely on a certain university going into clearing. To round off talking about the routes, I think it's really important to say that no route is better or worse than another. Once you've been accepted onto the medical course, you are a medical student regardless of what route you took to get there. And on that note, many of the people in your year group, especially on the undergraduate course, will be from a variety of routes. I know there are postgraduates in my year, there are standard entry applicants in my year, there are foundation years in my year, people that came through clearing, people that read took, there are so many different people and we are all medical students. It's not a medical student that took a foundation year, it's just a medical student. And by the time you graduate, exact same situation, you are all doctors, you're not a doctor that did this you are a doctor. I think that's the important thing to remember. Everyone goes through life differently. Some people might not know they want to do medicine until they've already started a completely different career and gone, actually, I'd quite like to do medicine. Then go do an access to higher education diploma. There may be people that have started on a biomedical degree 
we suddenly decide actually I'd really like to do medicine and go and do a postgraduate degree. So these routes ensure that there's a massive variety of people in the medical like profession, which is great because the diversity of the doctors should represent the diversity of the patients that they treat. So that is how I'm gonna finish off this video. If you have found this useful, please hit like down below. And if you are looking at getting into medical school, this is just the first episode in many that I'm going to be releasing around getting into medicine. So consider hitting subscribe and ringing the notification bell so you know when I start releasing more of them. Apart from that, thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.